Welcome to Groovy and Grails webinar series from jpassion.com. Uh, today's topic is controller part two, topic number nine. So let's start with the presentation. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. Oh, actually, I thought I actually changed a little bit. Uh, hold a second. Apology. I thought I actually changed it. Yeah, it looks like I have not uh, created a PDF file after some changes. So let me just create a PDF file and we'll get started. All right, so let's get started. So these are the set of topics we are going to cover. So we will cover URL mapping and filters, Webflow, and command object. And then we are going to cover some miscellaneous features, including logging. So let's move on with URL mapping. So customization of URL mapping in Grails could be done by changing or customizing URL mapping that Groovy file on the conf directory. So under URL mapping class, you have a mapping static, uh, the uh, property, and uh, then you have a closure. Inside the closure, you can specify the mappings you want. So here, uh, when there is a, a URL that ends with the uh, slash product URL, then what we want is we want to invoke list action of product controller. So the second example is uh, where you have controller, but you don't specify action. In this case, uh, default action of student controller will be picked up. Uh, instead of actually having this kind of method uh, syntax, you can specify in the form of a closure. So here in teacher, uh, when teacher URL uh, comes in, uh, we want to select a list action of teacher controller. So this is the same same a semantical meaning, but here we are using method notation. Here we are using closure notation. So you can use either. So when you create uh, your Grails application, uh, the default URL mapping is configured for you. So this is what you will see on the URL mappings that Groovy file. So here uh, we specify, well, actually, as a default. Uh, this uh, mapping, uh, so controller, action, and ID uh, will be used. And we will also talk about cons constraints later on, and then a couple of other uh, the uh, mappings. And again, we'll talk about these things. So this is, this is the default mapping you will have when you create a Grails application, every Grails application. OK. so variables in the URL. So we have already seen examples of having variable in the previous slides as a default. So this is a variable, controller variable, action variable, and ID variable. What it means is that whatever that comes from the client in the form of URL, uh, whenever you see this dollar sign, that means the value of the URL will be picked up as a variable. So in this case, after product, uh, whatever value after that will be picked up as ID variable. The value of that URL, the token value of that, will be picked up into uh, will be uh, will be sent into uh, the value of ID variable. Uh, in this case, if you have slash block slash year slash month and slash day and ID, that means uh, all these uh, tokens. Uh, will be picked up as values of variables. And you can access these variables uh, in params. In fact, they are uh, going to be properties of params objects. So here, 
Uh, in this case, you are going to access it by params.id. Uh, in this case, you are going to access this one by params block and params year and things like that. Optional variables. So if you have a question mark on each of these tokens, that means that's optional. Okay. So in this case, this is required, but rest of it, they are all optional. Arbitrary variables. You can pass arbitrary variables uh, through this uh, the uh, um, um, the uh, uh, closure notation. So in this case, for every URL that comes with the holidays uh, slash win, uh, the year and month, uh, those things will be also passed. So they're actually being passed as like a parameters. Uh, so you can access these things using params.year and params.month. Uh, dynamically resolved variables. So instead of actually setting the values like um, hard-coded value like this, you can in fact provide uh, the uh, closure. And uh, so here, this uh, the expression inside this closure will be uh, evaluated, and the result will be the assigned to is variable variable. So basically, you can access params dot is eligible. Uh, that should be the result of this execution. So. Uh, the uh, the variables could be set uh, from the execution of uh, code. Uh, mapping to views directly. So in many cases, you do not want to have uh, actions of controllers to be involved. You just want to go to a particular view. So that is how you can actually set using a very simple notation. So you can just specify the view. So you don't specify control and action. Instead, you specify view. So in this case, uh, for root URL, we want to select uh, the root index.gsp file. Uh, in this case, when there is the uh, URL slash product, we want to display product.index.gsp right away. So there is no action involved. Uh, you can specify uh, the alternatively if you need a view that is specific to a given controller, so you can specify uh, you know the controller, and then you can specify view. So in this case, it will select the help.gsp of this controller. Uh, mapping to response codes. So you can specify response codes, for example, 43, that's you know, access denied, and 44, not found kind of things. So you can specify either uh, controller and action format like this, or if you want to just directly go to a particular page, then you can specify this URL like this. Okay. So in this case, whenever there is 44, it will pick up not found a GSP file uh, under uh, the uh, errors uh, subdirectory, which is under views directory. Uh, the, uh, you can configure a particular exception as well. So here, you know, you can specify a particular exception, like a my exception or null point exception. So you could be more specific in terms of uh, the uh, what you want to uh, display. So in this case, you know, for 500, you could have, in fact, a multiple different type of exceptions and different uh, dependent exception will result in displaying a different uh, page. Uh, mapping to HTTP methods. So you can specify the show action has to be get and uh, the update has to be uh, the uh, oh, I'm sorry. So what I'm saying, yes. Yeah, so we're going to actually talk about the HTTP restrictions later on. But here, it's not really restriction. It's basically the uh, the uh, uh, when uh, URL is this, but HTTP method is get, then you want to use show. You want to use a show action. And if uh, you know you got the same URL, but if HTTP method is put, then you want to call update action and uh, delete action, save action, and things like that. So this is actually quite useful when you do invoke RESTful services. Okay? So RESTful services, uh, they're going to use a different, they're going to select a different action depending on uh, what HTTP method that is being used. 
uh, mapping wildcards. So here, uh, whenever there is a URL that is a start like this, then it will take the uh, uh, image controller and default action of that image controller will be used. Uh, this is basically the same thing as this. You know, we basically use a variable here. So in that case, whatever value that comes in will be picked up as prompts dot name. But you know, in terms of the uh, selecting controller, it should work exactly the same as this. So here we don't have any variable, so there is no you know name variable that you can work with. Okay. Uh, if you have a star star, that means any URL that you know any URL that ends with a .jpg, regardless of how, how many subdirectories you have. In this case, uh, in this first case, uh, it has to be JPG right under images directory. Uh, constraint. So you can specify constraints. In this case, uh, we want to specify the values has to be, in this case, year has to be decimal value uh, of four digit, four digit. A month has to be two digit, and day has to be uh, two digit. So we can specify constraints in terms of uh, the values coming in from the client in the URL. If those matches do not, uh, if there is no match, then obviously it's going to be four four error, not found error. Uh, named URL mappings. You can give a name to uh, URL mapping. So in this case, for this mapping, we want to give a name to we want to give a student list as a name okay so you say name and the actual name and then the the mapping and then you can use that named mapping in your gsp file so in this case uh, the uh, i'm using a g link and then for mapping i specify the name of the mapping okay and that is basically you are specifying you know this this uh, the controller is a student and action is the list okay Okay, so let's move on to exercise one. Exercise one. So we are going to create the Grails application called the controller two underscore app, which I have already done it. Okay. And uh, then we are going to create the domain class. So domain class is going to be uh, come jpassion.student. And uh, so I have already done that as well. So it does have a two uh, fields, name and age. And the constraint name has to be unique. And it cannot be null. And then we have an age. All right, so we are going to then generate uh, controller actions and uh, all the views by doing generate all on com j passion uh, student. So let's do that. So generate all come j passion and student. And then we are going to run the application. And then we are going to actually take a look at the default mapping. So we are going to actually go to uh, URL mappings.groovy file on the conf directory. And this is what we are going to see. As I said before, these are the default okay, uh, the, that gets generated for every Grails application. All right, so it's generated. So let's try to run it. And we are going to take a look at the uh, on the comp and the URL mapping file. So here, any URL that comes with in the form of controller action and ID uh, will be picked up. So this is default, meaning you know that this controller of this action uh, will be used to handle that request. Okay. So and also we have a two. The, uh, the, uh, uh, so this is the direct mapping. So whenever there is the uh, root URL, that's basically this. If I click this one, it's going to actually go index.gsp uh, file, which is, if you go to views, we have uh, this index.gsp file. Okay, so this is actually basically being displayed uh, when I click this. 
Okay, so let's uh, try to run this guy. So this is what gets displayed, and that's in you know that's from that URL mapping that we saw. Okay. All right. So we studied uh, the uh, 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 the URL mapping that was generated. Uh, now we are going to actually see params, and uh, here we're going to use the uh, control interceptor. So we are going to uh, add this uh, before interceptor for student controller, and then we're going to just use a println, and we're going to just display params. Okay. So let's go to controller. And we're going to add this method. OK. <clears throat> All right. And uh, let's save the change. And then we're going to actually, you know, we create a couple of students. So we go over here. So here the controller is student and the uh, action is list. Okay. If I click new student and again it takes the uh, student controller and then it invokes the create action. Okay. So I'm going to just create myself and now you can see uh, the uh, params are being actually being displayed. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, params here. So this is the first time we are displaying the root page. So the controller is student and index is uh, index. And then we listed it and then we created it. And then we created the first person, sanction and age. You can see age and name, params. But the you know, important, th important thing I want you to remember here is that basically, you know, the every URL ends with URL request contains what controller and what action uh, is actually being invoked. Okay, so here we are displaying. This is a show, so student show, and this is the ID, right? Okay, so you can see ID is picked up as one as well. Okay. All right, so that's basically what we just did. All right, so let's set arbitrary variables. So here we are going to go to URL mapping. And uh, we are going to add these two arbitrary variables. So meaning every URL comes in from the, uh, the client will have these two variables set. So here, uh, so year uh, variable and uh, month variable will be set with 2013 and 5. So save the change, and uh, let's try to show student one more time. We'll just refresh the page, and you can see the uh, year, prams.year, and prams.month will be set to, you know, 2013 and 2005, as we have done right here. Okay. All right, so that's what we just did. All right, so we're going to just undo this change because this is just for the exercise. Now we are going to actually do mapping to views directly. So here uh, we are going to, uh, you know, so what we want to do is uh, whenever there is a controller, in this case student, and then if it ends with my own, then we want to select student my own .gsp file directly. Okay, so there is no action involved. So there is no action called the my own. Okay, so this is the direct mapping. So I'm going to just copy this one to, uh, we'll just add at the end. Okay, and then we have, of course, create uh, the uh, student uh, uh, my own .gsp file. So let's create the uh, my own .gsp file with its contents. Okay, so here, uh, so we want to actually create right here. Okay, new and .gsp file, and file name is my own. 